Hey guys, it's the Metal Blade 5, and welcome to my response to IGN's My Hero Academia's Best and Worst Quirks Ranked video. As the title mostly says, IGN has attempted to rank all of the Class 1A students' quirks with a cringy voiceover, and some... mixed results, to say the least. This is a... Very strange list, to put it in the nicest way I can. I'm not very good at ranking things objectively, and would struggle to make this kind of video, but I would definitely say that my list would be pretty different to theirs. When I came across this video, I thought there would be a lot of disagreements, but I underestimate how much. A lot of the quirk placements on this list feel super off, and what I take even more issue with is the reasoning, or sometimes lack thereof, for why they rank the quirks the way they did. Some of which don't even have to do with the quirks, but I'll get to that later. The issues I have with this video bugged me so much that it's why this ended up becoming the next response video. Going through each rank and explaining why I disagree with that rank and or the reasoning behind it. This isn't me having a go at IGN just because they put a quirk I like low on the list or anything like that. Just that I think this video could have been made much better, as well as having a better ranking system given some of the things they say. Before I get started, I'll go over two things that I will likely refer back to throughout this video. The first, which is more directed to what they say about the lower ranking quirks, is I have the belief that none of Class 1A's quirks are bad, but rather some are more situational than others, which plays a big part in why I may disagree with certain rankings. The other being the criteria they give in the video, as it will relate to an argument I'll make later on. To remember, this list is a ranking of quirks, how useful, practical, and heroic they actually are. It's not a list of best characters by personality or appearance. So, let's do this. Coming in at number 20, Masiato Ojiro. Ojiro's quirk is having a very strong tail. That's it. But it's an impressive tail, I, I guess. It gives him added endurance, strength, fighting skills, and agility. But again, that's it. That's it? I say you gave a lot of reasons for why Ojiro's quirk isn't simply, he has a tail. The tail acts like an extra limb, which can be used for the additional power, agility, and maneuverability like you said. Further improving his fighting skills by being able to jump around the area like a spider monkey and hitting people with the tail's strength. It's definitely far more practical and a lot less situational compared to some of the quirks you placed above it. At number 19, Meizo Shoji. Meizo is a big strong man who can duplicate parts of his face, mouth, ears, eyes, all at the tips of his tentacles. I mean, haven't we all wished for another mouth? No? I didn't think so. He can also glide, which it is cool, I guess, if you like gliding. I would place Shoji's quirk below Ojiro's because it is very situational. Possibly the most situational quirk of the entire class. Aside from the gliding and strength he gets from his quirk, Shoji being able to create extra eyes or ears can be very useful for espionage missions by allowing him to scout the area for threats, but in other types of incidents, especially direct confrontations with villains, I struggle to think of how helpful this ability would be there. And Craig Mouths is super redundant when he can already speak normally. Not saying it's a bad quirk, just that it has limited use, which makes me believe it should have been lower. At number 18, Yuga Aoyama. Yuga has a naval laser. Now, just imagine Cyclops and his optical laser beam blasts, only it looks a lot more weird since it's shooting right out of his belly. Yeah, that's Yuga. His hero's name is Can't Stop Twinkling, which is probably the weirdest thing about him. Aside from his quirk that gives him a debilitating stomach ache, <laughs> Man, it's a belly laser after all. Ha! I don't like how you skimmed over Aoyama's stomach ache weakness. Most quirks have some sort of drawback or limitation, and Aoyama's is probably one of the worst, which is why I think it should have been lower. Arguably below Shoji's. He gets that stomach ache after firing his laser for more than a second. That severely cripples his quirk's usability, as he either has to fire it for a very short amount of time, which could be very bad in a lot of situations like fights, 
Or if he does fire it for longer and gets inflicted with that stomach ache, then that's even worse as he effectively becomes dead weight at that point. Number 17 is Rikado Sato. You spell Rikado's name wrong. A minor error, but go on. Not only does Sato have a very criminally underdeveloped personality as a member of Class 1A, he also has a pretty underwhelming quirk. By eating a lot of sugar, he can exhibit super strength for a few minutes. It's similar to a three-year-old hopped up on a bowl of sugary cereal. Come on, Rikado. Based on your reasoning, you appear to have ranked Rikado's quirk solely on its concept rather than its execution, which I find very unfair. The exact specifics of Sugar Rush are that for every 10 grams of sugar that Rikido consumes, his strength is multiplied by 5 for 3 minutes. While it's definitely not the strongest quirk in Class 1A, I think it is quite a bit better than how you made it sound. A multiplier of 5 towards strength is really good, and it's less situational compared to several quirks that placed higher on this list. The downsides are that Rikido gets dumber in exchange for his extra strength, and if he runs out of the sugar he carries on his suit, then he's kinda screwed. So I agree with Sugar Rush being more on the lower end, but not for the reason you gave. Number 16 is Kyoka Jiro. Kyoka's quirk is a bit of an earful. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. She has earphone jacks that hang from her earlobes, which she plugs into objects and channels the sound of her heartbeat into them. Not the coolest quirk, but at least it'd be easy for her to pass the aux cord. She's got two of them hanging from her earlobes. How many do you have? My only issue with Jiro's entry, other than its placement, is that you overly simplified the explanation of her quirk to the point that you made it sound less useful than what it actually is instead filling up more of the time making headphone jokes. Yes, she channels the sound of her heartbeat through her earlobes, but this has multiple uses. She can plug her earlobes into objects to do things like hear through walls and, as you even show in the video, as a form of attack, either by plugging them into her speaker boots or having the sound waves deal internal damage to said object. It's not a one-trick pony. At number 15, Koji Koda. Koda is the heart of Class 1A in many ways. Having the ability to call on and command any animal is a fantastic quirk to have. But it's not higher up on the list simply because, well, it can't stand up against some of the more high-level heroes in Class 1A. Um, how is Koda's quirk better than Jiro's? It's another case of, it's not a bad quirk, just more situational. Which correlates to why a lot of people question how Koda passed the entrance exam. The environment is a major factor in how viable Anna Voice can be for the given situation. If Koda is in, say, a forest, then there are tons of animals he could command. But in a city, he has far less to work with. In that sort of area, the only animals I could think of him being able to use are like a civilian's dog, a stray cat, or birds that happen to be flying by. And if he's in a fight, he could be at a major disadvantage, as in conjunction, they're just normal animals. They don't get powered up or anything. So strength would have to be in numbers unless he books it for the zoo. Meanwhile, Jiro's earphone jack isn't held back by those factors, making it more reliable in more scenarios, which is why I think it should have been the higher of the two sound-based quirks on this list. Number 14 on the list is Hanta Sero. Just imagine if Spider-Man built web launchers for his forearms. <laughs> it's kind of impractical, but highly effective. Now, tape is the kind of silly and campy superpower that I wish we saw more of. And the fact that Cero has these strange action figure elbows for whatever reason is a weird quirk in and of itself. You didn't really go into much detail about Cero's quirk, which doesn't help to persuade me why he's at this spot and not a bit higher. Tape has a lot of practicality to it. Obviously, it can stick people and objects together, it can immobilize people by wrapping them up, and go back to the Spider-Man comparison, he can use it to swing around, just to name a few. Plus, Sero has a very large tape ammunition, so he can keep using it for a long time. Oh, and another editing mistake I noticed? In this clip, that isn't Sero's tape wrapping them up. You can even see that Sero is one of the wrapped students. It's Aizawa's scarf. Again, another minor error. Continue. 
Number 13, Mina Ashido. Ashido's appearance is utterly adorable. Her quirk, however, <laughs> isn't much heroic, but you've got to admit, it's, it's a limited skill to have. Yeah. There are definitely situations where excreting corrosive acid could be useful, although we do admit she is waifu material, just not her quirk. It's not. No. I don't see how acid is a limited quirk in any capacity. Sure, it can be dangerous if not used or controlled carefully, but it is a very strong quirk as the acid can melt most objects, including highly durable ones. This makes it a highly potent quirk for combat as villains and their weapons will quickly get weakened and destroyed by its corrosiveness. Outside of battle, it can also be used for things like infiltration missions by melting holes into walls, for instance. For the some situations where acid could be helpful, it sounds really helpful! Number 12, Momo Yaoyorozu. Momo is a decent character, but thanks to her costume and how her powers manifest, she is also a sad excuse for fan service. And her quirk is one that's generally underused and underwhelming. Sorry, Momo. What? Did, did I hear that right? Yaoyorozu's quirk is bad because it creates Fan service? I try not to be an asshole in these later responses, but you're really testing my patience now. This is the part of the video that annoys me the most. For starters, the way her quirk works is that the objects she creates come directly out of her skin. So it makes sense why her costume is the way it is, as if she were to wear a full bodysuit, it would just rip all the time. More importantly though, you are literally defining her entire character as being fan service. You say, eh, she's a decent character, but cleavage bad. Cause, you know, it doesn't matter how the character's written, what their personality is like, or any of the things that actually have to do with someone's character. The only thing that's important is how they look. That's the impression I get from this and from anyone else who says this kind of stuff. I said this before about fairy tale, and I'll say it again here. Fan service does not bug me at all. I may be horny, but at the end of the day, I believe that fan service is either a very small aspect or random occurrence in series like My Hero Academia, Fairy Tale, and so on, and shouldn't be turned into a massive deal like I see many others do. I have never ever given a shit about how Yao Yorozu is dressed, and I do like her because of what I see of her as a character. So the fact that you judged her quirk almost entirely by her outfit honestly infuriates me. You didn't even talk about her quirk! You just went full SJW and complained about her showing skin. So I'll explain it instead. Creation allows Yao Yorozu to make ANY inanimate object as long as she knows its molecular structure. Calling this quirk useful is a huge understatement. It has a use in pretty much any situation since she can create whatever object is needed. Its only real limitations are that larger objects take longer to create and its effectiveness is based on how much she eats. I said before I would struggle if I was making this kind of list, but I would definitely put creation near the top, because it is possibly the most practical quirk in the whole class. Yet IGN placed it in the bottom half of the list because they can't cope with cleavage. I don't even understand how it can be considered underwhelming. It's a good thing they didn't do this kind of video for the teachers as well. I can imagine what they'd say about midnight. Putting my TED talk aside, now I come to that argument I brought up at the beginning. This was prevalent in the earlier entries, but from here on is where I find it most apparent. At times, it feels like they're ranking this list based on the characters and not their quirks, as their explanations include things about the characters that have nothing to do with their quirks. It's very apparent with Yaoyorozu, but also with bits like when they talked about Mina being waifu material. It goes against their criteria where they said this list is about quirks, not the best characters. And it's backed up by how when they introduce each entry, they use the character's name and not the name of their quirk. It makes this video somewhat misleading. 
At number 11, we have Minoru Mineta. Mineta's quirk allows him to pull sticky balls from his head, which is a bit silly, I know. But it's rather fitting, given his perverted nature. The man also wears a diaper in his hero outfit. I, I like my anime to have a little silliness injected into it, so, you know, we had to put him somewhere on this list. While I think that Mineta's quirk is better than how it sounds on paper, there is no way that it is better than creation. Absolutely none whatsoever. One lets you effectively create any object, and the other lets you throw sticky balls that are attached to your head. I think any person you'd ask would instantly say which one is better. Plus, Pop-Off has the drawback of making Mineta's head bleed when he pulls off too many balls, which slightly limits its usability. Also, I find your reasoning for why Mineta is this high to be pretty hypocritical in regards to two things from earlier. First, you say you like having silliness in relation to Pop-Off's concept, yet you put Sugar Rush low on the list because of its silly concept. Then, you complain about fan service with Yaoyorozu, yet just above her, you place the character whose main trait is being a pervert. Coming in at number 10, Denki Kaminari. Electrification is a skill that we've seen numerous times before in superhero comics. It's always cool. Kaminari skills aren't as silly as the quirks you'll see further down in this list. But don't be fooled, because they're not particularly cool, exciting, or electrifying. Which is exactly what this one is. Again, you didn't really explain Denki's quirk. Nor why it's this high on the list, or how it meets your criteria. You just said, it's cool. Electrification is a strong quirk, so I don't have much issue with its specific placement, but you completely ignored its crippling weakness, which I think is a very important thing to mention, given how you say you're ranking these quirks. If Denki uses too much electricity at once, then his brain short circuits and he becomes an idiot. This practically forces him to use his electricity at close range, as otherwise he runs the risk of this happening. Granted, he has found a way to improve his range without exceeding his limits, but it's still something he has to be careful to avoid. Number 9, Ejido Kirishima. Hardening is a staple skill in a lot of superhero fiction and Pokemon. It's a useful support skill and one that allows its user some fantastic strength and defensive skills. But it's not all that interesting, especially as we've seen Ejido go head to head against another hero with an identical quirk during the tournament arc in Season 2. It was like watching two Metapods go up against each other. That comparison doesn't really work considering that Eijiro and Tetsu Tetsu have limbs to fight with. Regardless, you're saying that Hardening is a lame quirk because someone else has a similar ability? How does that make it bad? So if Tetsu Tetsu didn't exist, would you say it's good? Besides, the whole point of Tetsu Tetsu is that he is a redundant copy of Eijiro because of his similar quirk and the fact that he has the same first and surname with his full name literally meaning Iron 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 Iron. That's the joke! Even then, their quirks aren't completely identical, as in Tetsu Tetsu's case, his body is coated in metal and its durability is based on how much iron he eats. Also, your criteria are how useful, practical, and heroic the quirks are, so how interesting they are should not be a factor in this. Hardening makes Eijiro's body so durable that hardly anything can injure him when it's active. The rock-like texture that his skin takes also increases his physical strength, and its hardness can improve simply by Eijiro taking more damage. That sounds pretty frickin' practical, don't you think? By the way, Eijiro's costume has him being shirtless. But you didn't complain about that! Number 8, Tenya Ida. Ida is both the father of the group and the comic relief character. He's well written with some surprising depth of character, and we're rooting for him to get all the happiness he deserves. But his quirk is certainly not as strong or as useful as the ones we previously mentioned. Then why is he high on the list if that's the case? It's not like I've cut them off before they can make a but statement or anything. This is what they say immediately after. Nor is his quirk half as ridiculous as one of the ones we're about to name next. Check this out. You claim his quirk isn't as good as some of the previous ones, yet you put it higher than those. Huh? 
Once again, you didn't even talk about the quirk. You spent most of it on Tenya's character, which has nothing to do with the purpose of this list. Tenya's quirk, Engine, is super speed, but through the use of exhaust on his calves. Its only weaknesses are that the exhaust can overheat and possibly get clogged, though that latter one is far less likely to happen. It's a very good quirk that has proven its use, so I don't see how it's not as strong or useful as most of the previous ones. Number 7, Toru Hogakure. Hogakure. And you spelled her first name wrong as well. More minor errors I'm nitpicking here. Toru is an underrated and underutilized character in the class of 1A. Invisibility is always and forever a useful skill to have, especially when it comes to saving people and facing foes in a more strategic fashion. Metal Gear Solid, anyone? Okay, maybe not as ridiculous as I may have painted it out to be. It's actually pretty awesome. I mean, I've always wanted invisibility if I could have a superpower, but better than the likes of engine and hardening? Nah. And this is coming from someone who actually likes Toru despite her being a very minor student. It's good at what it does, as like you said, it's perfect for stealth, but it doesn't really give her any offensive ability, so I struggle to see how she'd be much help in a direct fight aside from assisting others. She can blind the opponent using light refraction, but this doesn't do any direct damage. Plus, Toru's costume is just a pair of gloves and boots. Aside from that, she's naked. But you didn't complain about that! Or does the fact you can't see anything make it okay for you? And at number six is Zuku Midoriya. Finally, our hero shows up. Deku's strength-based powers are not the best, nor are they the worst. One for all, award him some very impressive strength that allows him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the strongest foes out there and come out on top. But they're not all that exciting or diverse, but at least he gets to smash. How much about One for All did the writer of this video know? Cause it seems like not a lot to me. From a writing perspective, the whole point of One for All is that it kind of is the strongest quirk. It's only real downside is that you have to master it before it reaches that level. It feels like its placement on the list was greatly influenced by Izuku's current ability to harness its power. Something I don't completely agree with when this list is supposed to focus only on the quirks. Especially when you have All Might to show what One for All is like when it's around its full power. Part of me gets the impression that some aspects of this entry are only looking at Season 1 Izuku when his bones would always break, based on the background footage and them only mentioning strength as his power. Which would mean they ignored full cowling and shoot style. If that's true, then I think that's a big mistake. Number 5. Ochako Yuraraka. Uraraka. And you spelt the first name wrong again. Yuraraka is pretty damn adorable, and her quirk is nothing to be laughed at. They're defensive and supportive powers, not your typical explosive or destructive affair. She will often be placed in situations where she has to disarm a dangerous foe and defend those in peril. Her zero gravity powers can do exactly that. At first glance, it seems very inoffensive, but remember, she's a hero. Um, okay? That's strange reasoning? Zero gravity is very effective in combat for supportive, defensive, and offensive purposes. Look at how Chaco tried to beat Bakugo in the sports festival. Plus, it works for both straightforward approaches and more out-of-the-box ideas. That's what I think you should have said, in addition to acknowledging her nausea when she lifts too much weight. Number 4. Fumikagi Tokoyami Now, we don't see enough creative use of shadows in super-powered books and shows. There's so much potential in them. So it's really cool to see My Hero Academia take a character, one who inexplicably looks like a raven, and gives him a battle partner with its own consciousness. Also, the ability to fight and defend. Dark Shadow is actually my favorite quirk scene thus far, but I wouldn't have put it this high on the list, only because of its major flaw. Dark Shadow's power and control ability is based on light. In the light, it's weaker but docile. However, too bright a light causes it to become a useless wimp. In the dark, it's more powerful, but harder for Tokoyami to control. 
And if it gets too dark... Yeah. Number three, Suyu Asui. What's so damn awesome about Suyu is how she takes the power of a creepy and villainous X-Men character, Toad, and shows how adorable and clever it can be. Suyu is less about what she can create and more about what her body is capable of. And when it comes to having powers that can save people from dangerous situations, especially accidents and disasters, well, her powers are the most versatile. I wouldn't say the most versatile. While Frog is a very good quirk, it is literally described as Suyu doing anything a frog can, which means frog weaknesses also apply to her. Suyu's quirk makes her cold-blooded, so she's highly sensitive to cold temperatures where she becomes very sick and can pass out. This was even exploited once. So in colder environments and months, she won't really be that helpful. Also, it doesn't have the same level of physical strength compared to some of the past few quirks, namely one for all. And coming in at number two, Katsuki Bakugo. Bakugo is the Naruto of My Hero Academia, a hot-headed kid with a massive chip on his shoulder. Suitably, his quirk is the power to ignite nitroglycerin, which he secretes like sweat causing massive explosions, which he can then use offensively and for awesome maneuverability. It's a reckless and potentially dangerous quirk, but a very powerful one to have in a head-to-head -head fight. My only issue with Bakugo's section is you acknowledge that explosion is dangerous, however you put acid on the lower half of the list for it being dangerous. It's not as powerful as explosion, but your notion of it not being useful in most situations can apply to explosion as well if you think about it. Plus, they both have the same uses of offensive power and maneuverability. And coming in at number one, Mr. Hot, Mr. Cold, Shoto Todoroki. Todoroki, the result of a strategic pairing between his number two ranked hero father and his ice-powered mother. That's not Shoto's mom. That's his sister. Maybe they knew this and the editor just decided to use that clip for that moment instead for some reason? But you do see his mom, so I don't know why they couldn't have actually shown her instead? And that pretty much takes me to the end of the video. I don't really have anything to say about Shoto's entry, which wasn't just saying what Half Cold Half Hot's drawback is, though it's barely prominent, and that I'd still say One For All should have been number one when only looking at the quirks. I think what this video really needed was a more in-depth explanation. Because I have a hard time understanding why the quirks were ranked in this fashion, given that some which clearly met the given criteria were placed lower compared to some which didn't do that. The explanations we did get were either very basic, which didn't explain much of their reasoning, or were practically non-existent. Plus, there appeared to be a lot of overlooking when it came to the specifics, nitty-gritty, and weaknesses of these quirks that should play a huge role in trying to determine which ones are better than others. So their absence made this whole ranking system, if they even really had one, all the more odd to me. Backed up by how this video feels more like a ranking of characters a lot of the time, rather than the quirks, despite them clearly saying that was not the case at the beginning. If you wanted to make a ranking of characters, then that's fine. The video would have probably been much better if that was the case. You don't need to discuss the characters themselves when you claim they aren't the focus. Finally, we really did not need a cringy voiceover with cringy jokes. I only so much as giggled once throughout, and it didn't have anything to do with what they said. It was the clip of Bakugo falling flat on his face at the end. This whole topic could have been covered and executed much, much better. And I've seen similar kinds of videos that have done it much better too. So anyway, I've got another big video I want to make, so I should end this here. So I'll see you guys for my next response video. Again, whatever that may be, which might as well be the new outro for these.